I can't see. I can't see. One more, one more. What's going on guys, this is Bando at Bando TV and today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Miscreated. This is going to be more of a review about the game than more of a ga gameplay video. And this is going to be a video about, you know, my viewpoint or stance on this game as a person who's never heard about this game and, you know, who has played it in the state the game is in 2020, okay? I found out about this game when Shroud and Summit played it a couple weeks ago and it looked like a cool game that I wanted to try. You know, it pretty much had all the fundamental things that I would want out of survival game. That being said guys, off gates, I do want to let it be known that I'm not trying to push the agenda that this is the best survival game out or this is going to be the next big thing, okay? I do, you know, want to disclose that this game does have a lower player base, but let's, let's dive deeper into that. Why does this game have a low player base or do I think it deserves to have a bigger player base or what do I think about this game? What was my experience? But that's what this video is going to be about, okay? So this is Bando at Bando TV, and let's get this review cracking. Okay, guys, when you first spawn into the game, you're gonna realize that you're in an open world, apocalyptic environment. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that word. I can't say it. It's hard for me, but you guys get the gist. And the lighting is absolutely stunning. The environment looks pretty good. The houses all look different, you know, it's not the standard cookie cutter houses on each survival game that you usually see. And you kind of just wake up in a world and, you know, it's okay, here you are, survive. You know, it's one of those survival games, kind of like Daisy, and, you know, that those kind of survival games that kind of just throw you into like that, you know, I, I love it. I love the whole learning process and... um you know, just kind of like a process of elimination of what works and what doesn't and how am I going to survive? So you learn real quick that you're going to have to start looting. You're going to have to go house to house, place of interest, anywhere really to start looting. And, you know, you're going to have to find food. Um, food is just not, you know, like ready to eat. You have to inspect the food. You have to make sure it's even edible because apparently, you know, radiation <laughs> fucks with food. Who would have known? And that's something different that I haven't really seen a lot of survival games. I did think that was cool. And besides from looting, you're going to have to get to crafting as well. They have different things that you can craft that will help you, even as, you know, like a new player on the map. And I thought that was cool as well. Like, an example, I crafted an arrow and a bow. And they had a lot of different options for the arrows, and that was cool. And... You know, it's kind of like the same thing with, you know, the survival games. You, you just kind of get established and loot up first before, you know, you actually move on to the next step, which is base building. It took us a while to even really find a place to where we wanted to make our base. Because, guys, I don't know about, you know, what server, if you guys do decide to play this game or have played this game before. But our server, it was hard to find a place to make a base. Everywhere there was a base. I mean, we, I felt like we ran around at least an hour because everywhere we were like, okay, yeah, let's build here. And we'd go there and there'd be bases everywhere. But we did end up finding a spot. And to my surprise, the base building mechanics and how the UI is set up, it's not that hard. You, you, you don't need to find you know like rare materials to start a base or a lot of materials to start a base kind of like you know when daisy is a solo to start a base it takes a lot it, it takes a lot of you know looting and finding the right tools and all that stuff it's not like that in this game um you know it's not rare to find parts to to make a base it's more kind of in the opposite spectrum it's easy to make a base 
but you're going to have to do a lot of farming. I mean, you got to get a lot of materials. Uh, you got to get wood. You got to get rock. You got to get iron. And that is a lot of farming, guys. Um, I will say, by the time you're done with your base, you're going to be uh, proud of it or more happy about it because you actually worked for it, okay? So all that being said, we got to work. And I farmed. And I farmed. And we worked. And we built a base. Little by little, the base got bigger and bigger. And, you know, as we started adding, you're going to start tweaking your base, guys. Um, you know, you're going to think of a base as one thing. And then once when you're kind of in the midst, you're going to have better ideas. And that's what I liked about building this base as well. You know, um, we started tweaking and tweaking and adding and dismantling. And um, the base got better and better. And, you know, it started from these four foundation tiles to where it is now. So after getting the basics down and kind of, you know, been to city to city and got a base down and everything, even before we even got a base down, one of my first questions it was, where do we get the high tier loot? You know, where, where is the guns? Where's the body armor? Where's the snipers? The, the gun attachments? The military um, clothing? Military loot? Where is it? And guys... I wasn't let down when you look at the map there's bunkers scattered about the map and these bunkers is where the military loot or high tier loot is okay now some of these bunkers did not disappoint guys the amount of time you know it probably took to make these bunkers was you know it, I you know I'm not I'm no game dev but I was impressed with the amount of detail there was with these bunkers oh shit we're in an elevator yeah. what bro and how you know wow. it works to get high tier loot Run. you pretty much go in these bunkers you fight whatever you know mutants and then at the very end there's an armory and that's where all the loot is see that armory Nice. Nice. Can we close it too? Oh shit. Hey, he's ragged all. Oh, there's a there's a sass shotgun right here, dude, with some buckshot. You want for you. It. That's all you, man. You already have one. Oh, I dropped mine. Oh, you did? Okay. And last but not certainly least, let's not forget about raiding in this game. Ah, uh, dude, the tent's loaded. Oh, shit. A melee? Yeah, I do. We're hitting the boxes.
It's completely loaded. Holy shit, there's ghillie suits in here, dude. That's... A Thor 12 shotgun. Two-person tent. Five rounds. Bunch of five five six frag grenades. Any sniper rounds in that? Damn, dude had a flak vest. All right, guys, this is Bando at Bando TV, and I think that's going to wrap up the review. If you like what you saw, then try it. And if you don't like what if you didn't like what you saw, then don't play the game. You know, it's it, I could care less. But I did want to make this video just to highlight that this game is underrated. I had fun. The map detail is incredible. I mean, the most detail I've ever had in a survival game. All that being said, I'm not trying to push the agenda that this is the best survival game ever, because it's not. But this game does bring some things to the table that I like. When I want to play a survival game that miscreated brings to the table, then I'm going to play it, you know? So, I think this game is severely underrated. It's fun, and now it is on my radar. It is going to be a game that I'm going to go to when I want to play a certain niche of survival games. So this is Bando. Thanks for stopping by. Like, comment, subscribe, leave a question, anything, and I'm out.